Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us today. My name is Karen Murta. I'm with Fruition Partners. And today we're going to be doing the webinar Catch Code Defects with Test Runner by John Caruso. I'm here to kick it off uh, with a little advertisement. We are sponsors. I'm the project manager for FruitDevCon.com. Uh, and because you are here today, we know that you'd be a great candidate for this conference taking place this fall. Uh, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, this conference is the first conference dedicated to developing on the ServiceNow platform. It's being created by developers, for developers, and uh, like I say often, this isn't your standard conference. It's really a learning experience. It's going to be very hands-on. Uh, you're going to walk away with real solutions that you can use back at your office. Um, it does take place September 28th through October 2nd at the Westin in Chicago. All right, so what are we doing? We're going to have, there's over 25 unique sessions and labs. Like I said, it's very hands-on. Uh, we have six tracks. So the, the, uh, the event will end with a hackathon where you can join up with colleagues or new friends to uh, compete for some big prizes. Uh, we've got Fred Luddy from ServiceNow as our keynote. And there's good lots of networking opportunities with our partners, with folks from ServiceNow, Fruition Partners, and your coworkers across the country. Um, the Fruit DevCon is all inclusive. If you've got a brand to your manager, you can let them know. You're going to be well fed, you're going to be well taken care of, and you're going to learn a ton. Uh, we do have some discounts going on today. I want to let you know about one, if you want to write this down, Webinar 25 will get you 25% off uh, the list price that's being offered. Uh, right now, we have an early bird price that's going to be ending tomorrow at 7 p.m. So you can put that 25% onto that early bird and get yourself a real good deal. Uh, the conference, like I said, is two days on Monday and Tuesday. There's also pre-conference on Saturday and Sunday. We're offering a number of courses that are standard ServiceNow courses uh, like scripting and, and application development. And those are we're selling for $795, which is a huge discount over what it usually is, $1,495 to uh, $2,000. Um, FruitDevCon.com is a place you can check it all out. You can see the, the schedule and the, the classes that we're planning on hosting. You'll see there's a couple up there that, that John's going to be teaching. And, and like I said, what he's doing right now is just a small peek into the sort of things you'll get for two intensive days in Chicago. The last thing I have there, bring your manager for free. Just want to let you know we're also doing a CIO uh, exec track or director track um, so that they can also be learning how um, the, the exciting things that are happening as we extend the cloud and the platform. That's it. If you have any more questions, look at, uh, you can check out fruedevcon.com. You can email fruedevcon at fruitionpartners.com, and I'd be happy to help you out. So thanks for listening to my ad, and enjoy John's presentation. Hello, everybody, and welcome. After a short introduction, I'll be talking about Test Runner and the benefits of testing, uh, development agility, or writing code better, faster, and cheaper. Then we'll dive into a demo of Test Runner. My name is John Caruso, and I'm on the product development team at Fruition Partners. I've been developing on the ServiceNow platform for about a year and a half with the last six months working for Fruition. Test Runner was my first project as a Fruition employee, so I'm very happy to see such a great turnout for today's webinar. I guess I'm not the only developer who spent time, probably way too much time, tracking down some elusive defect. Prior to working at ServiceNow, or working for, on the ServiceNow platform, I wrote enterprise applications for many years in .NET and Java. For over 10 years now, I've been an evangelist for agile development methods, in particular extreme programming and Scrum. A key development practice of extreme programming is automated unit testing. It was this desire to do automated unit tests on ServiceNow that led to the creation of TestRunner. TestRunner is a tool for building automated test suites for server-side JavaScript in ServiceNow. It leverages Jasmine, a popular open source JavaScript testing framework. One of the nice features of Jasmine is that test suites can read like English sentences, helping to document business requirements. They also help document your code's API by describing the expected behavior of the classes, methods, and functions used in your production code. 
While helping to document business requirements and your code's API are nice side effects, the real value of building automated test suites is in finding and fixing defects before they get into production. From a Software Development Magazine article published way back in 1996, we'll review a couple of graphs showing the impacts of defects on development time and costs. In this first graph, we see how a reduction in defects is related to a reduction in development time. Or in other words, if you keep your code clean and bug free, you end up writing faster code. You might be wondering about that spike at the end. This is mainly from projects developing life critical systems like the life support systems on the space shuttle. It doesn't really apply to typical business applications. In the next graph, we see the cost to fix a defect increases the longer it remains undetected. So reducing defects not only re results in better, higher quality code, but it also leads to writing code faster and cheaper. The real problem is the time it can take to thoroughly test your code. On ServiceNow in particular, where there is often a complex collaboration between code and business rules, code and workflows, and elsewhere, testing can be a real pain. Let's jump over to a demo, and I'll walk through manually testing a typical service catalog workflow, then show how much time can be saved by writing an automated test suite with Test Runner. Okay, so the workflow for this catalog item, let me show the catalog item first. It's fairly simple. It's to uh, request access to department or project shared drives. And the business logic is that if the HR department is selected, and you are a, let me just verify. So we're requesting this for Able Tutor. Able Tutor, based on this custom field, is not a manager. So if we request it for Able, uh, it, it requires uh, uh, an approval. So testing this basically means going into the item, setting the right user, and then pulling up the request item and verifying that an approval request was sent. Let's take a look at the workflow behind this. Fairly simple. Check to see if the requested for person is a manager. If so, then there's no approval needed and it goes and generates a fulfillment task. If it's a non-manager and they've selected the HR department, then it requires uh, an approval from HR. So, as I demonstrated, it can take a little bit of time to, to actually test this uh, manually. And you can imagine if this workflow was more complex and had multiple levels of approval or had additional tasks that needed to be completed before the workflow could, could continue, you'd have a lot more steps than what I just showed. So how does this look testing using Test Runner with an automated unit test suite? Well, here's a suite. And if I refresh, you can see that that took less than a second, half a second. If we take a look at the, the test suite itself, I'm gonna pull up a, an IDE here. We can see how using Jasmine describe and it blocks, we set up our test data. In this case, I'm using uh, the shopping cart API setting our requested for to Able Tutor, who we just tested manually, adding the shared drive card item, selecting uh, the shared drive, and then in this case also the, the, the HR and IT options, placing the order, uh, finding the request item for that order, and then verifying that there's a corresponding approver.
Okay, and just to, to demonstrate that that's the case, I'm going to make a change to this workflow. We'll just set this to false. And rerun our test, and we can see that we've, we've failed. So if you can imagine someone making a change to the workflow, makes a mistake, having this uh, test suite, this unit test, will catch that defect that was introduced. Now this is a, a trivial example. Obviously, this is not a typical thing. What's probably more typical is you're going to have a, a change in the way your business logic works. So for this example, we're going to switch from this condition to a script that checks uh, your manager, whether your manager based on whether anyone reports to you um, using the normal uh, user table and checking the manager field. So in this case, I have a function that queries the user table, checks to see if the current user, uh, the current requested for user is a manager and uh, will return true, this is valid record. If it found a, a record, otherwise it returns false. Now when we run our tests, I'm sorry, that was not supposed to work. Oh, actually, I know why. So this initial test uh, was the original test that if anyone was on the, the Fruit Evcon webinar last week uh, and saw Matt Hawk uh, do this, this a similar demonstration, this was his original test case. I've, I've expanded it, so I'm going to get rid of this original test. And um, uh, uncomment this. And what you'll see here is I'm, I'm checking for both uh, whether you request it as, as a manager and a non-manager. Uh, I'm also checking the fulfillment tasks get created and so on. So if we rerun re this, oh, wait, I have to, add in, actually, I'm sorry folks, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, what I had, thought was going to be the case is that we'd have to set this um, answer to this condition before it uh, passed, but uh, in this case, for some reason it was still working. So that, that was unexpected. It was failing before. But I think you get the point that uh, as, you, as you make changes to your, to your workflow logic, uh, there's a possibility that a bug can be introduced and uh, with a test suite you can, with an automated test suite, you can, you can catch that bug uh, very quickly. Okay, I'm going to move on. We have limited time. Also, if, if, if there are any questions, um, please uh, note them. I'll provide the email address. It's, it's actually products at uh, fruitionpartners.com. Um, Due to the amount of content that we'll be covering, I, I can't uh, really spend too much time answering questions. So we'll enter them in the chat window or send them via email and we'll, we'll respond back uh, uh, offline. So the next, next thing I want to demo is actually installing uh, Test Runner. So the first step is to go to fruitionpartners.com um, and under technology and snap store you'll see this bookmarklet that you drag to your bookmarks bar and go over to an instance where you sign in as an administrator click on the bookmarklet and you'll see the snap store dialog Select test runner and install. 
I'm going to install the demo data. And now I'll start the installation. Up in the upper left hand corner you'll see it uh, previewing and committing the update sets associated with this. I'm going to fast forward and assume that it's already installed. We'll go back to our version 08. And once it's installed, you'll see a new application with these modules. Just to quickly review this, the about uh, uh, module will describe test runner. And the important thing here is this link to uh, this introduction to Jasmine. As I mentioned, test runner is built on the Jasmine uh, open source test framework, and this uh, this page provides you uh, a good introduction into how you create uh, what Jasmine calls specs. We'll not get into that too much right now, but I just want to point that out. Uh, so Test Runner is composed of test projects. You don't have to use projects, but it's just a way of grouping multiple test suites together. Um, you might want to use projects to, to group longer running uh, tests uh, over shorter running tests or group all your tests that are related to a specific uh, area like service catalog items or, or your incident um, application, et cetera. And then the test suites themselves, I already demonstrated uh, what the test suite for this catalog item, the shared drive catalog item, looks like. Uh, you, can, you can check out the, the demo suites here. It's a good place to start. To uh, There's comments in here that uh, describe what's going on. And then when you run a, uh, run a suite, for example, running it this way, in this case the suite failed, I can click here and I can see uh, what assertions uh, were expected or what the expectations failed. I can also see failures here, and this is the one that we just ran, and see all test results here. So that's the basics of uh, the modules of the test runner application. I would like to get into how you create a, a suite here. And in this case, I'm going to start with creating a script include. And just to keep things simple, it's just going to be a, a little calculator. Now, as I mentioned, uh, well, ex extreme programming, in addition to, to, to saying automated test suites are, are uh, a good development practice. It, it also proposes that you write your test cases before you write the code. So in this case, I'm going to leave this as it is, not write any logic at this point, uh, but I'm going to start by creating a test suite here. These new uh, UI actions are installed when you install a test runner. And in this case, I am going to create an add method. There is one thing to speed things up uh, and to, to, you may have already noticed that I've been making changes uh, to the code in my IDE and they've been miraculously uh, making changes on the ServiceNow instance. That's this little file sync tool which uh, may be released uh, as a new product but I just wanted you to be aware of that. It basically maps between your file system and a ServiceNow instance uh, based on the, the directory that the file is in and uh, the extension. So in this case, um, I already have a calculator class and a calculator spec uh, and just to force a sync, I'm going to make a small change. And when we go over here, we can just back out of this. 
we can see that that's been synced up with with the uh, with the instance. And when we run it, obviously I'm testing. If we look at the code here, I'm trying to call an add method on this calculator that doesn't exist. So this is me writing a failing test. Uh, so with test-driven development, you write a failing test, then you write the logic to make the test pass, and then over time you refactor your code uh, to improve the design. So we have a failing test. I'm actually going to, I have this popped up right here. And just to show you, because this is on a separate tab, I can flip back here, go into my calculator code, and um, just add this. This hasn't been synced. That's the reason why the, the, the test failed. And now I need to make more of a change. There we go. OK. So we've added an add method. And I'm going to add a new test case. And I think this test case in particular demonstrates a common, uh, well, with JavaScript in particular, this is a, a common defect that you might uh, not be aware of. That's when you use floating point numbers that you are potentially going to encounter a rounding issue. So when we add in, uh, or when we add together 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, which are floating point, uh, we expect it to be 0 0.3, but when we run the test, we actually get this. Uh, so this is, this is not really a defect, it's a feature of the JavaScript language that you just need to be aware of. And um, the point here is that by defining the expected behavior in an automated test, uh, a defect like this, uh, which is not really a defect, but the defect is in the assumption that, that this should end up being 0.3. Anyway, that defect uh, was, was caught. So for now, I am going to um, if you put an x uh, before the describe block, it prevents it from running. So that's a quick way to, to cheat and say, hey, I don't want to see any defects. OK, so continuing with the test-driven development approach, we're going to write a test for subtracting a number. We see that that test fails. And I'm going to add in logic there. Oh, uh, I know what I did. I switched to, so another thing I wanted to demonstrate was uh, this before each block. It basically, rather than having your, uh, when you start adding additional test cases, you start seeing duplication, like I, I have this uh, new calculator line here, and I also have a new calculator line here. So with before each, it allows you to set up your tests. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I should point out before deleting these comments that the typical approach when you're writing a unit test is that you have an arrange, um, uh, arrange, act, and assert, where arrange is you're setting up the test, act is you're executing the code under test, and assert is where you're defining what your expectation um, is for the result. So let me get rid of this. And so now we're creating a new calculator before each of these test cases. So I don't need this here. And this is already removed. Now we run and we see everything still works, or everything works now. OK. As I said, we're running, uh, this is a sort of whirlwind of features here. And I see that I have about five minutes left. I see, I, mean, I need to check my list here. Oh, we covered the, the installation just to show that 
the installation worked. Uh, where's our install? Here it is. So when it finishes, you'll get a dialog um, describing Test Runner. And you should see down here uh, that Test Runner is installed. And if you install the test data, you should see it the sample project and the sample test suites. Let's see. One other thing before we run out of time is I just wanted to point out, going back to this instance, there are a couple of business rules um, that will that are installed as part of the test runner installation. And this run suites. What this does, it will automatically run the suite after you, uh, any associated test suites, after you um, update a uh, script include. So right now this is inactive. I'm going to update this. And now if we go to a script include, Our calculator include, for example, and make a small change that introduces a defect. When we update, you'll see that it automatically ran the spec, the, the test suite, and obviously that logic was wrong. Change it back. And now all tests uh, pass. And when you do do it that way, it's it's updating the the results here, so you can see the failure here and the pass uh, pass here. This table. Uh, another thing that you could do is is set up a notification where anytime something fails, it sends you an email, for example. So if, if uh, for some reason uh, a change is made to a script include uh, that causes uh, a defect to be introdu introduced, you could be notified. So even if uh, someone else is, is doing it, you can uh, set things up for a notification like that. In the last minute here, I'll very quickly review some uh, bugs that have been caught while I was developing uh, test runner and porting over some other JavaScript. Uh, this is interesting. So these these four bugs here, which are right here. Uh, the first one is is that empty arrays in JavaScript are supposed to be truthy, and and on ServiceNow they are not. They they evaluate as false. Um, another thing that you might have encountered is uh, is that if you're if you're using the glide evaluator, um, which is the same thing that's used when you load a script include and you call a method that doesn't exist on a class, you would think that it throws an exception, but it doesn't. Um, anyway, uh, I'll probably distribute these these bugs out to anyone who's interested. Okay, we're on the hour here. To close, let me go back to the deck. To review, not surprisingly, defects are bad. They are costly and slow down development. And customers usually are not very happy when they find any. So use Test Runner to build automated test suites and keep the bugs out of your code. If you want to learn more about using Test Runner and writing automated test suites, please join me at Fru DevCon while I'll be presenting an hour and a half long session on test driven development with Test Runner. Thanks everyone for attending, and I'll hand this off to Mike. Yeah, hey guys, uh, appreciate you sticking around. I know we're a couple minutes over. Uh, this is Mike Henderson uh, with Fruition, uh, help with communications here. Just wanted to uh, remind everybody that and, and let you know that uh, a recording of the webinar and a PDF of John's deck will be shared sometime early next week, so you'll be able to have that for uh, future reference. Also, we got a, a 
another webinar coming up next week, next Thursday, um, entitled Performance Analytics with ServiceNow. Um, you can go to our website, go to the webinar section uh, to read up a little more on that and uh, also register. So again, just want to say thanks to everybody for, for joining us today. Um, I know we got a couple questions uh, in the question box today. Um, just because this is a quick 30-minute uh, webinar, um, we uh, and we had so much content to cover, we really couldn't get to those. Uh, but I will be sure that John follows up with each and one of you um, personally uh, to answer your questions. So uh, thanks again, and look forward to seeing you guys at the next webinar.